a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup.
He has done great things. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Now I'm going to turn the panel over to Dr. Parker, who will take us from here. Give the Lord a hand clap. Give Dr. Parker a hand clap.
be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. If God has the best to read and hear the news of this holy word. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come. We come this morning because you have brought us together. You have brought us together to show us what faithfulness looked like. You have brought us together to show us what service looks like. And we can't help but say thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you now for the life and times of Brother Hudson. We thank you for his courage to be a trailblazer. We thank you for his courage to go to Washington, D.C. and just bring back millions of dollars in funds for this city. We shall never forget. Father, we thank you for his love and his kindness and his devotion to his monumental church family. Yes, God. We thank you today. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes. We can't help but lift you up today. Even though some of our heads may be bowed, we may have tears in our eyes, but you have promised us that we may endure for a night but joy coming in the morning. And we count it all joy right now, Heavenly Father. We count it all joy. Joy not in what we're going through, but joy in what we're growing to. Lift up everybody down here now. Bless this bereaved family. Bless the friends that are here today. And Heavenly Father, bless our monumental family. Yes. Provide us with someone of that same integrity. Provide us with someone of the same courage. Provide us with someone with the same faithfulness. Yes. And Heavenly Father, we will be mindful to give you all the glory and all the praise. Bless his family now. Bless his wife. Bless his son. Bless his siblings. This prayer we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
has changed a whole lot, but we was under Samuel Billy Cox, William Jr. Hudson. He stood out. I watched him serve God full of heart. <laughs> he didn't wait. He came to church as much as he went to his job. He didn't be God out.
want y'all to understand, when Will and I were in the Rose Elementary School, we never phantomed. We never phantomed that one day we provide leadership over a busing system that's secular. I don't We never phantomed that, the, 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 that God would take us to leadership over a busing system that segregated us, relegated us to the back of the bus. Will and I will remember, I see some black bus drivers, there were days that black people could not drive a bus in Memphis. I look around and there's a lot of young people think things have always been the way they are, no sir. Will Hudson came up on the rough side of the mountain. Right, the rough side of the mountain. I remember Will and I would comment, uh, I love Will Hudson. I want y'all to know this. Will Hudson was one of the most respected transportation executives in America. He brought more money from grants. Will Hudson was innovative. He was passionate. He loved his transportation. He, Gracie, then he lived and slept it every day, Alice, every day. But Will Hudson, I never met a, a, a person that was more dedicated to this task than Will. Will Hudson. Dedicated professional. Let me just say this on the personal side. Let you know how God works. I kept hearing rumors that Will's health was failing. There was a leak in the old building. And you know, when there's a leak in the old building, the old songwriter say your soul got to move. So just a few days ago, Will's soul it had to move. But you heard. His faithfulness to the church in the one day that he got to leave his work now. But he had another home. And that's where Will is with us today. I had the privilege of talking to Will. Just a few months ago, I saw Henry Wilson. He was in the restaurant. He said, Doc, reach out to Will. He said, Will's health is failing. He said, give me his phone number. I called Will. Thank God I had the opportunity to talk to Will. Will and I had a great conversation. Look up to the heels. 
because he, he always balanced the budget. Although the cost was going up, and he wasn't getting any new money from Washington, but that budget was balanced every time. We said he's pulling rabbits out of heads. <laughs> We're sad about the fact that he's departed. When I heard it, I cried. But you know what, family, family and friends, we all said. But you know, there's another group right. on the other side. Yeah. And they're looking on him as he comes across, and they're saying, here he comes. Let's celebrate. Here he comes. No more doctor business. Here he comes. No more chemo. Here he comes. No more restless nights. Here he comes. And he's resting in the good of Jesus. That's a good place to be. So I say to cry, but realize we are just really blessed that this world is a better place because he was here. Farewell, my friend, my dear friend. I'm going to miss you. Would you show us what leadership is supposed to really be? Leadership with knowledge and with grace and with style and with humility. This world is a better place because of you. We are blessed because you were here. First, I have to say to the Hudson family, thank you all so much for sharing Mr. Hudson with this community because he has made this community better. Thank you. Mr. Hudson served on the board of the Mid-South Food Bank from 2002 to 2010. Upon learning of his passing, Susan Sanford, the past president and CEO, said Mr. Hudson served valiantly on the board. She noted that he was mild-mannered and was a great leader. And Pat Danahy, who served as chair during Mr. Hudson's tenure, said he was a good man, and I was honored to serve with him. Now, I must admit that I had a sense of pride when he came on the board. That sense of pride of a strong black man setting the strategic directions and policies for the Mid-South Food Bank. That sense of pride of a fellow warrior leading while others followed. During the board meetings, I would watch Mr. Hudson. And he would sit quietly while all the bantering was going on. And he wouldn't say anything. He would just sit quietly and listen. But when he said something, it was like the E.F. Hutton commercial. Right. Everyone would listen. Because I believe that he knew that there was a time to be silent and there was a time to speak. One of the fellow board, one of his fellow board members shared with me that when Susan got ready to retire, the food bank wanted to do a national search. And Mr. Hudson spoke up and said, why? Because Estella has earned this job. Why do you all want to go somewhere and find somebody else? And he advocated strongly for them to put me in the role of president and CEO. All right, all right guys. In 2011, when I became the CEO, he initiated Matters Stuff the Bus. And that program is still going today. And I remember he said, I am going to support you because you work hard for this community and we're going to support you in this effort. And I want to share with you that this collection has garnered more than 200,000 meals since it started for our Every September during Hunger Action Month, there's a bus that's parked at the Poplar Plaza Shopping Center 
and volunteers from Madden are there to collect the food and funds because Mr. Hudson knew that many of the people who were customers of Madden relied on the food bank for their next meal. Amen! Now, I spoke to Mr. Hudson a few weeks ago. I called him to share that we were in the new building and how things were going. And we had a good conversation. But when that conversation ended, I realized that Mr. Hudson did not regret that he had advocated for me to become the CEO. And that gave me a strong sense of pride, more pride than I've felt with anything that I've accomplished at the food bank. So it is only fitting that I conclude my remarks for this forum with a quote from Booker T. Washington. There is no power on earth that can neutralize the influence of a high, pure, simple, and useful life. William Hudson's influence will never be neutralized and his works will live on through this community. Thank you again, Hudson family, for sharing him with this community. Amen!
He was vacuuming one side of the field and he had me vacuuming the other side of the field. I learned to be a, a mean Christmas gift wrapper because he had me down there shipping packages and wrapping those, wrapping those packages. Uh, my dad had left Franklin Simon and started in 1959 and left there in 1979. And the only reason he left is he closed the <laughs> something about that 25% discount <laughs> i tell you what, my mama was one of the sharpest women in Memphis, Tennessee. Amen. One of those many jobs that my dad had was raised with me. And I know without a doubt he loved his boy. He walked in. He talked in. I know firsthand about Memphis area transit. I was there. That bus pulled off. And I see right there. Didn't they watch him interact with his passengers? I know about Franklin Simon as I said because I was there. I was vacuuming, doing whatever he wanted me to do, get through the day. I even knew about the police department. Some Saturday nights, he was working, he'd have his break, come over in the patrol car, and pick me up from Big Mama's house. But most importantly, I remember him being a trustee here at Monument Baptist Church. Yeah, yeah. Again, he made sure I was there. He had me in that, in that office after church, got me to count that money. <laughs> so you see, it didn't matter what he did, he made sure I was with him. He made sure I was in his life. Right. Even when I became a grown man, he loved Memphis State sports. But because I lived out of town, I couldn't go to the games with him. And Uncle Charlie, I want to thank you for being his buddy. <laughs> but we made a pact that we were going to go when Memphis State started getting a little better. <laughs> <laughs> we decided we were going to go to the bowl games. You wrong for that. And we made four of them. But the most uh, memorable bowl game for me was Western Kentucky and Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I lived in South Carolina, so I said, Dad, I'm going to go on down to Fort Lauderdale, and I'm going to meet you at the airport. So I got to there. He called me. I'm here. Where are you? He said, I'm at the Orange Pole, gate number three. So I drove around.
And you know, all of you have gotten this advice from him, but he says, son, if you get in trouble and you're right, right now. He said, well, then you're wrong. I ain't selling my house for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. On another occasion while I was in high school, I went out with some friends one night. And uh, he told me what time to be in. And I guess I was feeling myself. <laughs> I stayed out on the late than I should have. So then we were living on Maple Press. And we lived in the cold sun. So I turned it to the cold, turned the headlights off, <laughs> coast up to the driveway. And I went going to the garage, but that made too much noise. <laughs> Put my key in the front door quietly. To my surprise, folks, William Hudson was sitting in that boy in the chair, <laughs> waiting on me. And his message was simple, short and sweet. So baby, you better find somewhere else. <laughs> All right. As I get ready to take my seat, I just want to share some more of those famous sayings that, that he often shared with us. I'd say, Daddy, I met a new girlfriend. Son, if you like her, I love her. Right. He said, except one girl, I also he said she wouldn't work too good for her. <laughs>
like Tam, uh, Brother William Hudson. This is a day that we can tell it like it is. Amen. You don't have to make anything up. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you let me take my summer plates, uh, I would like to introduce the trustees of this church. So you'll be kind enough to stand for me, please. Thank you. We got another official board here that we work together and we stand for the same thing, which is the Deacon Board by the Chairmanship, Brother James Shaw. Will the Deacon Board be kind enough to stand for me, please? You can have a seat, please. Now, have a seat.
not bring it to the membership, we made sure that we knew where we were going. We knew where we were going. Sometimes we might have a few problems, but we go back and make sure we clear it up. But the foundation would be right. And we didn't change. Later on in life, as the, what I call getting old, late old age, over the evening for the older man, you know, for us and I. We didn't have time to wait on things. The last two projects that we actually performed together here at the church was we had lost a poor pet. And during that time I was ill and he truly took the leadership to make sure it happened. The next project, project that we had, we decided that we needed to do something about the rule. And he made sure that that happened, but during that time I was doing a little better. I was able to put in more input into the process. And anyway, even though he was the chairman, he always would say, I would generally be satisfied with this. All right, nice. He respected, even though he was a leader, he respected fellowship. Man. It didn't take anything from him. And he was going along with saying, hey, I'm the chairman, and, every, and I already know what I'm going to prove. That's what it meant to me. You heard the ex-mayor say that Brother Hudson was a, one of the best transit authority directors in the United States. And I can suffer to tell you he was. Now, I didn't know that much about transit, but I knew this. No way. God's great earth, could he stay in that position as long as he did if he wasn't doing something right? Amen. So, yeah. He had to be doing something right. Yeah. Most of the transit authority directors didn't last long. I got a friend whose son is almost a doctor in the area, but he didn't last long. So when I saw that, I knew Brother Hustle was some type of leader, some type of director. And I was proud to say he was my friend, and he knew where he was going, and I didn't mind him leading me. Right. Now let's deal with eternal life, and I'll take my seat. I thought, first of all, before I go into that, I'll tell you. Brother Hudson and I was unusually close, and uh, we called and talked to one another about various topics, and we would pray together. Right. And uh, sometimes we might talk two or three times a day if necessary. He said, I'll call you back and we'll talk or whatever <laughs> necessary to make it work. Now, when it comes to, we knew that life was never fight after this fight in the window day. So what we would do, we make sure we put God first. Yes. Whatever we would do. Yes. Then we would follow. Once that happened, we had two sheets. We had the research sheet. That was when we dealing with the regular type of things going on, the problems of life. But then, when you go to get them with your resume, it's more complicated. Because you got to have some help. So, when you're in school, you do research, you can get it checked out, and they give it back to you and say, you need to rewrite this, underline this, whatever, put the red bars all over it. Eternal life will be like that. Either you are or you're not. Now, I can imagine on the 23rd of August, 2000, 2020 to 2019, I can see Brother Hudson was getting ready that early that morning to submit his brother baby. Mm. And in my sight, I, I can see when I think about it. I can see angels 
of the left and on the right. And I can think about it and say, what they, I know what they had coming, because he was my friend, and I knew what he stand for, and I knew all about him pretty much, I thought. And I can hear him say this. It's, he says, not make, he didn't make it out of because he wasn't that type of man. He says, something, love always. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let's try that again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. First, I would like to give honor to God. And then I will rub Bryant and all the food we guests as well. And most of all, this lovely family. Part of you, Allison, and your crew, we've worked together for years. Rodney, I can't work with you there, but I've been talking about you. So we're all in one together. And the boys. I don't know which one of them handcuffed him that time, but he told me about when he got handcuffed and he couldn't get loose. But I assume this would be, and he smiled. So. <laughs> all right. I came today to speak to you uh, from the company of Matter. Will all past and present employees of Matter please stand? that did not have anything but a GED. 
But some of those people now have a bachelor's degree. All right. Because of Mr. Hudson. Hallelujah. We had, we had individuals that came to work for Mount that had masters. Now they have doctorates because of Mr. Hudson. We have some that were just graduated college as engineering students, but now they have their masters where he would allow them to slip off a few days each week or every two weeks to go to class and go to school. He right. will have a right. When I think of Mr. William Hudson, some words come to my mind. Those words stand out. One is honor. The other is dedication. The other is dignity. Now, Mr. Hudson was in a position that he carried the position of honor. And I can remember the times that he was disrespected, but he always gave what? Respect. Yes, he did. We would go to board meetings and we would go to town hall meetings and the people were not thankful for the service that he was struggling each and every day to provide them. We didn't have the money, but he said, we're going to serve them anyway. We're going to figure a way to keep these routes going. And he asked for the things that he needed, but it wasn't accepted like it should have been. It wasn't because of him being Mr. Hudson. It was because of the mindset of people on what? Transportation. All right. Um, in order to run those big buses, it takes what? Money. Mm. And we pray that he told me, he said, on his sick bed, he said, if you tell the new guy, Mr. Rosenfeld, that I'm praying for him. All right. You hear what I said? All I'm right. praying for him. He said, I hope they will give him the money necessary for him to give the type transportation system this community deserves. Because you can't make it, Kirsten, without money. All right. And that's the kind of man he was, asking for blessings for his replacement. How many of us help others help themselves? Come on. You know, you can't talk about Mr. William Hudson and Babbitt without talking about family. Right. You can't talk about Mr. William Hudson and Matter without talking about love. You can't talk about Mr. William Hudson Jr. and Matter without saying he is a God fearing man. Right. Because only, only a God fearing man could go through what he did oh, with what he had to work with right. and keep a smile on his face. Yeah.
asking for dollars, not get the respect and dignity that it should have, All and right. it come back again. I can remember when no one talks about what Main Street would have been if it had not been for Mr. William yes, Hudson yes. Jr. and Harold Ford coming up with money to buy what? Central Station in yes. It was the best year ever. You could buy property now and now for a few hundred dollars. Now they are many thousand dollars if you buy anything, if you can buy it. But that trolley line that they had the dreams of setting and he had the dubious task of making it work in unworkly conditions has fixed it. It has fixed it. If that wasn't for just them, that wasn't for just us, everything he did was for who? Everybody. Amen. He cared for everyone. I just want to thank the family for allowing me to say a few words. When you are, you are as great as William Hudson Jr. and you are as low on the program as I was, everything has been said. But I want somebody here to just take heed. I brought a cap and I left it at my seat. You may not know this, but Memphis Area Transit Authority was the number one transit safety person in the nation one year. I didn't say in Tennessee. I didn't say Arkansas, Mississippi. I said in the nation. Number one. And he believes safety was first. And that's what we're going to continue. May God bless you. May God keep you. May his blessings fall upon you. We pray for Miss Gracie. Because 60 years, being with a man like William Hudson, is a major boy. Rodney, we let you know we're praying for you. If you need anything, you get with us. And this comes from me, as well as the CEO, Gary Rosenthal. May God bless you. Thank you.
to as we bring forth the Reverend Dr. Melvin Charles Smith, the brother and pastor of Mount Moriah East. I saw some class of 1956, which is our class. If you're here, would you please stand?
He walked in, walked out with his head down. I said, what's the matter? He said, they wouldn't give me an application. I said, don't worry about it. Go back in. But don't go to the same person. All right now. All right now. He got the application. He started driving the bus. The old number four walk Avenue. He would tell me the day before, I'm going to be in Chelsea and Walker at 12.15. And it was at 12.15 that I would have him a cold one on the sandwich yeah. and a coke. Because he couldn't get off and go and eat in the restaurants. But God was good to him. He said, about 5.15, I'll be at this stop. I'd find another sandwich and take it to him. All of our lives, we've expressed love to each other. Bill and I never had an argument. All of our lives, we always conceded to each other. We always bonded together for the rest of the family. Bill Hudson, William Hudson, All right. my brother, my friend. We would always close our conversations. I said, Mr. President, keep it in the middle of the road. He said, Reverend Doctor, you keep it in the middle of the road. And I shall leave you now by saying he kept it in the middle of the road. But look at the road to which he kept it in. Not the broad road, but the narrow road. The road that leads from earth to glory. And right now, he's in our Father's arms, receiving his crown of life. Somebody ever say hallelujah to that.
life and legacy of Mr. William Hudson, Jr., the preeminent transit professional who rose through the ranks at Memphis Area Transit Authority to become the first African American to hold the position of President and General Manager. And whereas Mr. Hudson was born October 1st, 1939 in Memphis, Tennessee, a product of legacy Memphis City Schools, he was a proud graduate of Booker T. Washington High School, a South Memphis gym whose motto was, we're tops, we lead, others follow. After graduation, he matriculated at Memorial One College. And whereas Mr. Hudson began his career in 1964 as one of the first African-American bus operators in Mata, the largest public transportation provider in Memphis, in the state of Tennessee. Whereas Mr. Hudson had worked in nearly every aspect of transit and on several levels at Mata and garnered respect and admiration from his colleagues. His ascension at Mata included Director of Transit Operations, Customer Service and Marketing, and Labor Relations and Field Operations. And whereas under Mr. Hudson's leadership, he completed the Riverfront Loop, the Madison Avenue Rail Line, the Air Waste Transit Center, the American Way Transit Center, daily service to West Memphis, the North End Terminal, and the Central Station, which includes the train and trolley Memphis, the museum, Amtrak, commercial spaces, Memphis Farmers Market, and 63 beautiful apartments in the historic South Main District. And Mr. Hudson was so admired and respected the main hall at Central Station was renamed Hudson Hall in his honor. <laughs> this is an appropriate honor and rare distinction for someone like Mr. Hudson. His accomplishments watered many recognitions while he was living. This is from the City of Memphis proclamation, whereas on Friday, August 23rd, 2019, William Hudson Jr., beloved husband, father, and friend, was called home to his heavenly father, and whereas William Hudson Jr. was a valued asset in the city of Memphis and a true public servant. His strength of character and innate desire to serve his fellow man drove him to make countless contributions to our community throughout his illustrious career. From Memphis City Council, whereas William Hudson Jr. leads behind a most powerful legacy weighing on the minds of all Memphians, from the powerful to the disenfranchised, everywhere and always has thought this leader as a drum major for his community. Whereas the Memphis City Council hopes to convey that William Hudson Jr. would not be soon forgotten. And in the words of Maya Angelou, the cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but long for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the cage bird sings of freedom. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Memphis City Council joins the family, friends, former colleagues, and grateful community in honoring the life of William Hudson, Jr. Lastly, Mount Moriah East Baptist Church, we, the members of Mount Moriah East Baptist Church, want the family to know our hearts are with you as we gather to bid a Christian farewell to Brother William Hudson Jr. Whereas Brother William Hudson Jr. came to Christ at the age of 12 and was not only a faithful member and trustee at Monumental Baptist Church under the leadership of civil rights activist Reverend Sandra Billy Cowles and Reverend Wade, but also a loving husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, uncle, public leader, and most of all, a child of God. Thank you.
know you've heard it a lot. But this is a good example that you probably can hand as the litmus test for running a race. Race is not given to the swift. But it's given to the one that endured to the end. To the end. Uh, and nobody has witnesses in the house. And he ran his race. And he endured all the way to the end. We just thank God for him. I personally thank God for him because he he was a mentor of Piuses. He would come to me and say, Pastor, you may not agree with me. That was his leading statement. But I want you to listen to And I will always listen to Because here was my litmus test that I would share with other people even when I didn't agree. That I knew in my heart that 100% of the things that he wanted to do, wanted me to do, it was always for the good and for the love of his church. That was my I was, I'm just, I'm just grateful about him to, to have had him in my life. Grace has celebrated 60 years this year of matrimony while we are celebrating 60 years as a church. That means all of his adult life, they both served here at Monumental Baptist Church. I think that deserves a hand down of praise. How to get folks to stay at church now until the kids graduate high school. Man. Six years. I know that all that's been said, and, but there's some more. And you can't say it all. You can't say it all. But there were so many examples that can be gleaned from the life. A William Hudson Jr. and a Grace Hudson. I mean, how do you do it? I mean, how do you do it? How how do you make it work against all of the odds that's obviously against you? I mean, how do you stand up straight when the world and your young adult life is beating you down every step of the way? How do you keep a family together and inspire people around you? when people are trying to tear the man of the house down. Uh, it is a testimony. I'm, I'm rightfully so. I am a little concerned about the generation that's coming. Uh, rightfully so, I'm a little concerned because our patience and tolerance for hardship is seem to be a little thing. I see so many instances where people don't want to go through anything. They want it, if not right now, or yesterday. But we can learn a lot from this generation. They had it tough, y'all. They had it tough. They had it tougher than we can imagine. So anytime you see somebody that's 70 plus, 70, 80 years old, y'all are just salute them because they went through a lot just to be here. Today. Thank you, Dr. Parker, Dr. Smith, Pastor Short. Reverend Sears and Reverend Black and Reverend Johnson for, for being here. Thank you, choir, for blessing.
Blessing House, our music staff, our, our ushers, our, everybody is, 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 is here. They were making preparation for this time, for this day. And, and the reason they were doing it because you don't have to beg people to do things for somebody to serve. You know, it's not like that all the way. Sometimes we have to double check and make sure we got somebody that can sing a song at yeah, a funeral. Yeah, yeah. There are singers all over the place. I, Linda, I didn't know you could sing like that. And you got to come back and visit and, and bless us singing and shouting. She sung herself happy. That, that's when you know that God, God gave her that one. When you sing yourself happy. Amen. Amen. We got a few folks over there do the same thing. They, they sing. They try to direct the choir get happy to them. Amen. Um, and I will tell them that you, you can't be directing the people and get happy while you're directing. Um, and God has been good to us. I, might be good to us. I, I, I just had, have a, a couple of words from the Lord. Because I, I just, I'm so thankful that at Hong Kong celebration all the time. It never fails. I'm so grateful. This is, this is probably the easiest thing to do at a homegoing celebration when you have somebody that's beloved. Because, because the family and the friends, y'all eulogize them before I even get up. Uh, and if, you know, if, 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 if a preacher don't know what to say, take notes while the family is talking. And, and you can have a whole sermon to preach, you know, just from what the family shares. I, I, I'm just grateful. I'm, I'm grateful to, to, to God for giving us William Hudson for all these years. But, but there's, I have a couple of words from the Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 18th chapter. I, I'm going to say this, uh, and I won't be wrong. I thought somebody was going to say, take your time, Pastor. Yes. <laughs> at, at least you didn't say, okay. <laughs> Matthew the 18th chapter. Verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? It's a good question. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of him and said, Verily I say unto you, yeah. except ye be converted right. and become as little children, yeah. ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall do what? Humble himself as this little child. The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one, such as this little child in my name, receive it me. Thank you. You may be seated. Gives us a prescription for everlasting life. No matter where you start, no matter where you are. See, when we come to Christ, he is, and, and, it, and it's interesting, it doesn't matter where your station is in life. And it doesn't matter what side of the track you're born on. It doesn't matter if you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth or no spoon in your mouth. It doesn't matter if you live in the urban or in the rural, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you had adequate, you know, surrounding the school uh, to attend. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you start coming to Christ, you know, with a, a, a problem with crime. It doesn't matter if you were chemically addicted. It doesn't matter if you had a mental health problem. It doesn't matter if you were not a good father. It doesn't matter if you're not a good mother or a good son or a good daughter to your mother and your father. It doesn't matter when you start. See, when, when we come to 
Christ. It doesn't matter where we start. The only thing that's important is the direction that you're headed. So as long as we have our eyes set on the mark, set on Christ and Him only, then we are all headed in the same direction. He, 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 Christ gives us the formula, He gives us the prescription for making it into the kingdom of heaven. He said, if you humble yourself, humble yourself, you humble yourself. So that tells me humility is one of the main ingredients for entering into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And no matter where you are at any point in our lives, we can what, humble ourselves. And we know that Brother William Hussle was a humble man. Yeah. And I like that word, humble. I like humility. Yeah. Humility is one of my favorite ingredients. Humility. I, I love humility. I, I love to see humility because when I see humility, I'm looking at one of the attributes, one of the character uh, 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 attributes of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Bible said that Christ went about doing good. Yeah. That, that even when they ridiculed him, that they, he opened not his mouth. Yeah. Even when they accused him, he did not accuse them back. That he even talked his own disciple, and they smacked you on one cheek, turned the other cheek. Peter was that thing. I just want you to know. Yeah. He, he, he taught them that if they touch you, come give them your cloak. Yeah. Yeah. Then if they ask for forgiveness several times, forgive them seven times. Church called Monument of Baptist 
what they were saying. He said, I mean, he even told some of them. The Bible said that I see the lips move. You're talking a good game. He said, y'all, you all sit in Moses' seat. Yeah. And then you command people to do the burden of the thing that Moses had commanded. But you yourself don't do any of that. Yeah. He had a word that he used for them. He called them, y'all know the word, he called them hypocrites. <laughs> because they will say one thing and do another. Yeah. You can't say it about William Hudson Jr. As you met him on Monday, he was the same guy you saw at 704 South Parkway East on Sunday morning. And you saw him on Sunday morning, and he was the same guy at my executive office on Monday morning. Because he understood what it meant to serve a living God. Talk to 
brother, Brother Felita, and we are thankful to God that we have an opportunity to know him.